In many team sports, the coach has the option of substituting one player with another. A new player enters the field of play and replaces a player who is already on the field. In the world of chemistry, substitution sometimes takes place during chemical reactions. In our last lab, we demonstrated two types of chemical reactions, synthesis and decomposition. In this lab, we will demonstrate three additional types of chemical reactions. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. The first type of chemical reaction we will explore is called a single replacement reaction, which is sometimes called a substitution reaction. A single replacement reaction is a reaction in which a single element replaces an element in a compound to form a different compound and a single element. The general form for a single replacement reaction is A plus BC yields AC plus B. In a single replacement reaction, we start with element A, which dissolves in water and dissociates or breaks apart into ions. Next, we add a compound composed of two elements, B and C. When compound BC dissolves, it dissociates into ions of element B and ions of element C. In the solution, ions of element A bond with ions of element C to form a new compound, AC. This leaves ions of element B as a single element product. An example of a single replacement reaction is the reaction of zinc with sulfuric acid. When zinc reacts with sulfuric acid, Zinc ions replace hydrogen ions in sulfuric acid. Zinc ions then bond with sulfate ions to produce zinc sulfate. The hydrogen that was replaced is given off as hydrogen gas. For this experiment, we pour 30 milliliters of dilute sulfuric acid into a test tube. Then we add 20 grams of powdered zinc to the acid. As the zinc dissolves into the sulfuric acid, bubbles of hydrogen gas are formed. The hydrogen gas passes through this glass tube and is collected in this test tube by water displacement. Water displacement is a method of collecting a gas by displacing a volume of water. We can verify that this is hydrogen gas with a burning wood splint. Hydrogen gas is combustible so it explodes with a pop. The zinc sulfate formed by the reaction is dissolved in the solution, so we cannot see it, but we can confirm its existence with a simple test. To prove that we have zinc sulfate in the solution, we add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. If zinc sulfate is present in the solution, adding sodium hydroxide will cause a precipitate to form. A precipitate is an insoluble compound formed as a result of a physical or chemical change in a solution. Sodium hydroxide reacts with zinc sulfate to produce zinc hydroxide. Zinc hydroxide is not soluble in water, so it forms a cloudy white precipitate in the solution. The presence of the precipitate proves that zinc sulfate was present in the solution. Single replacement also takes place when potassium reacts with water. In certain chemical reactions, water molecules break up into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So, to help you visualize how single replacement takes place in this reaction, we rewrote the chemical formula of water as HOH. When potassium reacts with water in this single replacement reaction, a potassium ion replaces the hydrogen ion. Potassium ions bond with hydroxide ions to produce potassium hydroxide. 
the hydrogen that was replaced is given off as a gas. Like sodium, potassium is a highly reactive alkali metal that is so soft it can be cut with a knife. The reaction with water will produce potassium hydroxide, but we will not be able to see the product since it will be dissolved in water. To detect the presence of potassium hydroxide, which is a base, we need to use a pH indicator. The pH indicator we will use is called bromothymol blue. Bromothymol blue turns green in a neutral solution, such as water, which has a pH of 7.0. Now, we drop a small piece of potassium into the water. Since potassium is less dense than water, it floats. The chemical reaction begins almost immediately. The rapid release of hydrogen gas propels the sample of potassium around the beaker. The reaction is exothermic. So much heat is generated that the hydrogen gas ignites and the sample explodes. Let's watch the reaction again in slow motion. Bromothymol blue turns blue in the presence of a base, like potassium hydroxide. Since the water turned blue, we know that a single replacement reaction has occurred. Potassium replaced hydrogen to form potassium hydroxide. The second type of chemical reaction we will observe in this lab is called a double replacement reaction. A double replacement reaction is a reaction in which two ionic compounds exchange ions to produce two new compounds. The general form for a double replacement reaction is AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. Think of double replacement like this. Suppose there are two brothers, Jacob and Daniel, who both wear the same size clothes. Jacob wears a green shirt and tan colored pants, and Daniel wears a blue shirt with black pants. On a different morning, Jacob wears the green shirt with black pants, and Daniel wears the blue shirt with tan pants. Jacob gave up his tan pants and put on black pants. Daniel gave up his black pants and put on tan pants. Each boy exchanged something with the other boy, so a double replacement was made. The exchange produced two new outfits. In a double replacement reaction, each compound exchanges an ion with the other compound. Compound AB gives up ion B, which is accepted by compound CD. At the same time, compound CD gives up ion D, which is accepted by compound AB. The exchange of ions produces two new compounds, AD and CB. Most double replacement reactions take place when two compounds are dissolved in water. When two compounds dissolve in water, they form an aqueous solution. Any solution in which a compound has been dissolved in water is an aqueous solution. The chemical formula for an aqueous solution consists of the chemical formula for the compound followed by the symbol AQ in parentheses. The chemical formula for an aqueous solution of sodium chloride is NaCl with the symbol AQ in parentheses. If an aqueous solution of lead 2 nitrate is mixed with an aqueous solution of potassium iodide, a double replacement reaction occurs. Each compound gives up an ion and takes an ion from the other compound to produce two new compounds, lead 2 iodide and potassium nitrate. Notice that each compound in the chemical equation is listed as an aqueous solution, except 
lead to iodide. This is because lead to iodide does not dissolve in water. When it is produced, it becomes a solid precipitate, which is indicated by an S in parentheses. To demonstrate this double replacement reaction, we dissolve 50 grams of lead 2 nitrate in 250 milliliters of water. Next, we dissolve 36 grams of potassium iodide in 250 milliliters of water. As you can see, each solution is colorless and clear. Notice what happens when we combine the two solutions. The potassium nitrate that is produced is soluble in water, but the lead 2 iodide is not. We cannot see the potassium nitrate, but the lead 2 iodide forms a solid yellow precipitate. The two reactant compounds, lead 2 nitrate and potassium iodide, exchanged ions, and two new products, potassium nitrate and lead 2 iodide, were produced by double replacement. A type of reaction similar to a double replacement reaction is a neutralization reaction, which occurs when we combine an acid and a base. Any substance capable of producing hydrogen ions when dissolved in water is an acid. Likewise, any substance capable of accepting hydrogen ions when dissolved in water is a base. An acid has a sour taste and a base has a bitter taste. However, you should never taste a substance to determine if it is an acid or a base. Acids are corrosive, which means they gradually dissolve some inorganic materials, such as metals, and strong acids destroy organic tissue. Strong bases are caustic, which means they can destroy organic tissue and cause severe burns. The term pH is used to indicate how acidic or how basic a solution is. The pH of an acid is less than 7.0. The pH of a base is greater than 7.0. We can determine if a solution is acidic with a chemical indicator such as blue litmus or with a pH meter such as this. Here we have a beaker of hydrochloric acid. According to the pH meter, the pH of this solution is 2.0, which indicates that the solution is a strong acid. We can verify that this is an acid with litmus paper. An acid causes blue litmus paper to turn red. Since the litmus paper turned red, we can confirm that this solution is an acid. We can determine if a solution is basic with a chemical indicator, such as red litmus, or with a pH meter. Here, we have a beaker of sodium hydroxide, a strong base. According to our pH meter, the pH of this solution is 13.0, which indicates that it is a strong base. We can verify this is a base with red litmus paper. A base causes red litmus paper to turn blue. Since the litmus paper turned blue, we can confirm that this solution is a base. A neutral substance that is neither acidic nor basic has a pH of 7.0. Distilled water has a pH of 7.0. Neither blue nor red litmus paper is affected by distilled water. When an acid and a base are mixed, they neutralize each other. Adding a base to an acid makes the acid more basic. Adding an acid to a base makes the base more acidic. The reaction of an acid with a base resulting in a more neutral product is a neutralization reaction. The products of a neutralization reaction are a salt and water. A salt is any ionic compound formed by the cation of a base and the anion of an acid. When we hear the word salt, we usually think of table salt or sodium chloride, but sodium chloride is just one example of a salt. 
Other salts include ammonium dichromate, copper 2 sulfate, and nickel 2 chloride. We will perform an acid-base neutralization by combining hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. The products of this reaction will be sodium chloride, which is a salt, and water. This beaker contains dilute hydrochloric acid. This beaker contains dilute sodium hydroxide. The pH of this solution is 1.0, which means we have a strong acid. To tell us when the acid is neutralized, we add a few drops of a chemical indicator called phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is clear in an acid, but it turns pink in a base. Next, we pour sodium hydroxide into this burette. The burette will allow us to add the base to the acid in a slow, controlled manner. By carefully opening the valve at the bottom of the burette, we can dispense a measured amount of the base. As we continue to add sodium hydroxide to the hydrochloric acid, the pH will steadily rise. We see that the solution turns pink for a second, but it quickly returns to its clear color. This means that the pH is rising and the solution is becoming more neutral. As we continue adding sodium hydroxide, we see that the pink color remains without becoming clear. The indicator tells us that this solution is now slightly basic, so the acid has been neutralized and the reaction has produced water and sodium chloride. In this lab, we have looked at two single replacement reactions, a double replacement reaction and a neutralization reaction. In our next lab, we will examine some of the physical and chemical properties of metals. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.